Threadripper has been the saving grace for so many performance users out there. And at this point, I probably don't need to explain why. From a price to performance perspective, it just makes a whole lot of sense for a lot of users. Luckily, those who want to leverage the benefits of the X399 platform, but also want to build a compact system have not been left in the dark. And today we're going to look at an outstanding motherboard from ASRock that makes that compact Threadripper dream a reality. So this is the ASRock X399 M Tai Chi and basically in a nutshell it takes the X399 massive spec list and tries to slap as much of it as possible onto the micro ATX form factor. And that's not easy to do because, you know, X399 is enormous. You've got 64 PCIe 3.0 lanes, quad channel memory, and up to 12 SATA ports. So it's easy to understand why a lot of other motherboard manufacturers haven't even attempted to do what ASRock has done with the X399M. And that's because this is the only micro ATX board out there for Threadripper CPUs. Now you would assume that you'd be paying more for the X399M seeing as this board really has no other competitors, but it's actually one of the cheaper boards out there currently available for under 300 US dollars. Here's what it looks like when standing next to the colossal X399 Zenith Extreme from ASUS, which has an eATX layout. Of course, straight away, it's easy to identify the main differences. The first one is of course the number of PCI Express 3.0 slots as well as the spacing between them. However, this should only concern those using more than two graphics cards exceeding two slots each. Most ATX and eATX X399 boards has four PCI Express 3.0 slots with a spacing of two expansion slots between them. This allows for a total of four two slot cards. However, with the X399M, you are limited to just two two slot cards or three single slot cards, possibly if you are water cooling. Also on the X399M, you will still be able to run quad channel memory. However, the max DDR4 capacity has been cut in half from 128 gigabytes to 64 gigabytes. So definitely keep that in mind and here we've got one dim slot for each channel whereas usually you'd find two slots per channel eight SATA ports can be found at their usual location on the right side of the board with an additional u.2 connector a little further up so storage should not be an issue and for m.2 storage whereas the full zenith extreme can accommodate a single m.2 drive on board and then another two with the m.2 dim card ASRock did manage to squeeze in three slots here on board. There's one between the first and second PCI Express slot, basically underneath your first graphics card. And there's another two towards the right, which would actually be preferable as they won't be trapped underneath that card. And they've got access to a lot more airflow. The rear IO is sufficient and you would expect that from an X399 board. Eight 3.1 Gen 1 ports, two Gen 2 ports with one being type C. We've also got dual gigabit LAN. 802.11 AC Wi-Fi is built in and BIOS flashback is thankfully here, which actually made this review possible as my sample did not ship with a BIOS that supports second generation Threadripper CPUs. But after about three minutes or so, I was up and running. Aesthetically, I think the board looks great. A nice, neutral, understated design. And it's great to see that despite this being one of the cheaper X399 boards on the market, it still looks and feels very premium. I'm not sure about the little gear icons personally, especially on the chipset heatsink. However, I do appreciate that at least they do blend in with the rest of the board. RGB lighting is limited, which is fine by me. Only some subtle lighting underneath the chipset heatsink gear thing which can easily be controlled or disabled. Overall, a big thumbs up for the understated design and I'd be more than happy to run this in my personal system. Power and reset button are located towards the top right of the board. Pretty simple and nothing flashy. And you'll also find a clear CMOS button at the bottom of the board, but I personally always prefer these at the rear IO. There is also a postcode display below the power and reset buttons. Thankfully, this only displays postcodes and does not stay illuminated red while your system is on. On. The VRM heatsinks seem pretty sufficient in size and I really do appreciate the fin cutouts which will help dissipate a lot of that heat. Before we take a look at VRM temperatures under load with the Threadripper 2950X, let's first take a look at the power circuit underneath the heatsinks and see how
how that compares to the larger, more expensive boards on the market. So despite this being a smaller board, we are actually getting a pretty decent VRM here that is fully capable of running the majority of second generation Threadripper CPUs at full blast. Something that I absolutely cannot stand is when motherboard manufacturers will reserve their premium VRM configurations for ATX and eATX boards only, and then cheap out when it comes to their micro ATX and mini ITX models. The vCore VRM here, however, is a true eight phase using the IR35201 controller that's pushing out eight phases to the CPU in eight plus zero mode. For the MOSFETs, we're getting the IR3555s, which are 60 amp integrated power stages. These are the same that are on the larger and more expensive Zenith Extreme from ASUS, which is also running in an eight phase configuration. The SOC VRM is fairly overkill and consists of three phases, also using the IR3555s, again, 60 amp power stages, and also the same IR35201 controller. So it's safe to say that the SOC is being fed quite well. Of course, though, there is the X399 creation from MSI, which we've also taken a look at. That board is what I would ultimately recommend if you're going with the 32 core 2990WX due to the epic 16 phase VRM. As we'll soon see though, I believe that even the X399 M Tai Chi will be sufficient for the 24 core 2970WX. In terms of performance, out of the box, the X399 M Tai Chi was boosting the Threadripper 2950X about 150 megahertz lower than the ASUS Zenith Extreme and MSI Image creation, 3.6 gigahertz versus 3.8. This is possibly due to some precision boost settings that are otherwise disabled on the ASRock board, but I don't see that as being too much of an issue because this little board can overclock quite well. As we just looked at, we are still getting a pretty strong VRM setup here, and it was enough to beat the ASUS Zenith Extreme and tie the MSI MEG creation for an overclock of 4.2 gigahertz at 1.35 volts. Just like the MSI creation board though, it was not able to maintain this clock speed with this particular memory kit pushed to 3600 megahertz and instead could only do this at 3200. With the CPU at stock settings though, we were able to push that memory kit up to 3600 megahertz at 1.5 volts. VRM temps under full load at the end of a 15 minute blender render were slightly warmer than the two larger EATX boards that I've tested, but these temperatures are well within spec even with a decent overclock in place. Keep in mind also that these temperatures were generated on an open test bench with no direct airflow, with the only airflow from the radiator fans on the AIO mounted behind the board. The point here is that you could get these temps even lower on all three of these boards in a case with sufficient top and rear mounted fans, not that it's a problem otherwise. So overall, I'm really impressed, and that's not only because the board is smaller than its larger competitors. I mean, at the end of the day, most of the space saving is from the lack of the bottom PCI Express slot and the additional memory modules, but I'm really surprised on what this board can deliver for the price. At 299 US dollars, it is exactly half the cost of the ASUS Zenith Extreme, which uses the same power stages in the same eight phase configuration. I guess what I'm happy to see is that there's no small form factor tax for this board, despite it being an exclusive board with no real competitors. It is the only micro ATX Threadripper board out there. And I know it sort of kills me to say this, but I guess the price is sort of where it is because no one really is building micro ATX Threadripper systems. And that I think is a bit of a shame because this board has a ton of overhead. I mean, the possibilities here when it comes to a compact Threadripper system should get people excited because there are a lot of good micro ATX cases out there. For example, I'm going to be using this board to build a compact Threadripper system in the Chimera Cerberus, which measures at just 18.5 liters of volume. And I'm hoping that build will serve as a bit of a template for those who want to build a powerful workstation as small as possible. Anyway, guys, I'd love to hear your thoughts down below on the X399M Tai Chi from ASRock. Personally, I think it's a killer little board that, you know, has the possibility to run a really awesome sort of compact workstation, one that I'm gonna be building uh, in the next couple weeks. I personally don't feel like this board is going to be holding back many Threadripper builds that are out there in the wild. I mean, the VRM is pretty solid and we were able to overclock the 2950X as well as those more expensive larger boards that are out there. Design is great. Uh, the only other real limitations would be the 64 gigabytes of memory. And yes, that is a real limitation for people who would otherwise be using 128 gigabytes, although that is not a whole lot of users. 
And then the only other main limitation would be the amount of PCI Express devices that you can run on this board. We're sort of limited to two two slot cards here, whereas on EATX and ATX board, you can run four two slot cards. I personally feel that two two slot cards are gonna be fine for the majority of people, but again, it's gonna be uh, depending on your use case and what applications you're gonna be running on your system. Otherwise guys, I really feel like this board will fit the bill for the majority of Threadripper builds out there. So if you're interested, feel free to check the links down below and you can check pricing. As always guys, a huge thanks for watching. Subscribe down below if you haven't already and I'll see you all in the next one.